Citizen Con has come and gone, and boy, do we have a lot to talk about. What's up, citizens? I am Dimebot, and uh, yeah, let's jump into it. Now, Citizen Con was basically 15 straight hours of info dumping. We're going to be looking at a lot of B-roll in the background. I think I have footage of most everything that I want to talk about. And that being said, what I want to talk about are the things that stuck out to me, because there is just too much to do in one video. We would be here until the next Citizen Con. So let's go ahead and start out with Squadron 42. They gave us a pretty good look at Squadron 42. The prologue, uh, we got to see some walking around, some shooting some turrets, a whole lot of cutscenes with a lot of A-list actors, Gary Oldman, um, Jillian Anderson. It was a lot, and it was very cinematic. It was very well done. Uh, they did not actually show... A ton of gameplay, if you compare it to how much cutscene there was. We did get the turret shooting sections. We got some running around and trying to escape the ship, trying to get to an escape pod, evading the big bad aliens, some zero-G sequences. All of it very cinematically presented. It reminded me a lot of what you might see out of something like Call of Duty or an Ubisoft game, Halo, that kind of thing. AAA stuff, really well produced. A couple weird glitches here and there. Um, we're looking at footage from the actual gameplay session they released later not the one that bugged out on them so much but they did have some crashes so yeah the demo gods weren't real happy there that being said i would have liked to have seen more of the kind of stuff they showed in the montage at the end of the squadron 42 uh, demo section they showed a lot of highlights of things you'll be doing in the game flying uh, different shooting missions where we didn't really get to see any flying except for a brief section where your character did pilot the gauntlet the capital ship that you were on in the Squadron 42 demo. So, coming in 2026, not coming in 2025. I can't say I'm honestly very surprised there. I wish it was coming sooner. I am excited. I do have my concerns that they may have spent a lot of money on big budget set pieces and cutscenes. But that remains to be seen. And that's also me being pessimistic, which I just kind of am sometimes. But 2026, not 2025. So, we're going to have to wait a while to get our hands on Squadron 42. Moving on, let's take a look at some of the other things that they released just real quick. We had the trailer for the Star Lancer. This is going to be a brand new ship that is coming out. There are currently two versions of the ship available in the Pledge Store, the Star Lancer Max and the Star Lancer TAC. One is medium freight. That uh, would be the Max variant. The TAC variant is a patrol vessel. Max crew is listed as four for the Max and six for the TAC. For weaponry, you're going to have two S4 weapons on both of them, four S3 missiles on both of them, but then the Max has two size 4 turrets, whereas the TAC has two size 5 turrets and two size 4 turrets. So that's where you're getting your difference there. Pretty interesting trailer showed in typical style, almost like a car commercial. Looks like an interesting ship. Uh, can't say that I'm a big fan of the stylings, but I am not a big fan of MISC ships in general, and I know some of you will absolutely love it. That is a personal preference thing. I also showed a, another commercial for the uh, Zeus, and this one was more of a look at the history, in-game lore history behind this particular ship. It was a really neat uh, commercial. I enjoyed it. Doesn't really make me want a Zeus. Again, I'm not a big fan of the styling of that ship, but I know a lot of people will be, and that's just, again, a personal preference thing. All right, so those are the two quick beats out of the way. Let's dive on into two things that look really interesting. First, they started talking about some of the new systems that are coming, and this is all going to be under the general umbrella of Star Citizen 1.0. This is beyond 4.0. This is going to be a 1.0. And they started showing off things like the worm hunt, which looks absolutely insane. Looks really interesting. A massive hunt taking part on foot, on the air, and ground vehicles, combined arms. Looks really, really fun. Uh, there was some interesting little things that happened with ships spinning wildly when they got hit, but that's just collision physics being weird. But 
You showed the players afterwards looting the worm, grabbing teeth, mining things off of it, loading them up. That's going to be the kind of things you can go back and sell or potentially use for a crafting. And that is something that we will start to get into a little bit more here in just a minute because they did show us that Star Citizen 1.0 is going to take a lot of these systems and they're going to add what they call a soft nervous system to them. They're going to loop all these activities back in on themselves. Uh, the different guilds and things that are out there. You're going to be able to engage in story missions. You're going to be able to meet guild representatives. You're going to be able to a earn rank with them, which will get you perks, things that you can buy, blueprints. And one of the examples they gave was you want to get a F8. Well, you can mine with the prospector and you can eventually earn enough money to buy yourself a little plot of land and you can build a fabrication hangar. And then you can do bounty missions to work yourself up to a point where you can buy the blueprint and then you can go get the resources you need to fabricate the thing in your fabrication hangar. Now, that is an incredibly condensed and simplified version, even of the simplified version that they gave us during the talk. But really, that was a huge, long section. I would encourage you to check out the full video on it. It is absolutely fascinating. But what they are attempting to do is take all of these systems and intermesh them and make it so that careers in the economy actually kind of have a point in the wider star citizen universe. They also showed off that in 1.0, we're going to have five star systems, including Terra. Terra is actually finally coming. We're going to have three lawful systems and two unlawful systems. Of course, in lawful systems, just as it is now, somebody can shut down the Camaray, and then you're going to have a problem in that sector. But in these lawful systems, you're going to have system authority and things that will respond quickly in high security zones, and they're going to have low security zones, medium security zones, and of course, the totally unlawful star systems like Pyro. So really kind of trying to wrap a lot of things in. They showed off base building, they showed off crafting, and they did show off some of the things that are there specifically for orgs, that being space stations that orgs can build, they can expand, they can customize, they can build capital ships at them. For the smaller players, you do have your base that you can build, and you can have your fabrication hangar, you can farm if you want to, they're adding more wildlife. It is a lot. Now, Let's caveat all this by saying that no hard timeline was given for this. 4.0 has to come first. Now, 4.0 is going to include Pyro, but no hard timeline for 1.0. And not all features are going to be readily available. They are promising that features will come at a higher level of polish, that they will be less buggy and more engaging. They're also promising that once you finish the main storyline, you will be able to get citizenship. Now, they did not detail all of the benefits of citizenship, but one thing they did tease was that citizenship will allow you to buy plots of land on planets that non-citizens cannot. They did say also that the story will be kind of like a tour bus you can get on and off as you want uh, they are also planning on adding things like fleet battles and things like that so a lot of mmo-ish type things going on which star citizen is an mmo as they reinforced several times it looks like they're finally doubling down on adding the systems around the technical framework we have that will enable these kind of activities and encourage you to do more than one career and really engage in different paths in order to get all the things you may want access to. I, for one, am very excited about this. This is something that I've been wanting. It's something meaningful to do with the careers, aside from the fact that I enjoy mining and salvaging and I do enjoy bounty hunting, but really trading and some of the other stuff, there's not a lot of reason to do it. Exploration is practically non-existent right now, for example, and these are things that they did address. The list of guilds is absolutely massive as far as the jobs. Uh, they even joke that they couldn't fit everything onto one slide with all the ship variants and everything else all at once, so there's a lot going on here. Now, that is basically the highlights of it. Like I said, there is way too much to cover here. I may dig into a few things much, much more in depth in a few videos if you guys like but that is the general overview of the things that i personally took out of citizen con that i found to be the most interesting maybe have the most promise had me looking the most forward to i'm curious what you guys think leave it down in the comments below and if you enjoyed the video like and subscribe it really helps the channel out also consider becoming a member of the channel i do put out videos a day early for members only for certain series and if you're here to the end, thanks for watching. Until the end, it is a huge help on YouTube. I'm Dan Butt. I'll see you guys next time.